Geno Smith is a big play quarterback who perfectly fits what the Seattle Seahawks want to do on offense. This touchdown throw against the Los Angeles Chargers is a perfect example of that. Smith is in shotgun on a left hash mark. He has DK Metcalf isolated to the left side on a narrow side of the field with three receivers working the wide side. Marquise Goodwin is the third option in the Seahawks passing game, so unsurprisingly he is the one given a one-on-one -on -one matchup by the defense. The Chargers give him that matchup because they're going to aggressively take Metcalf out of the game. It's not a true double team with two defenders on him from the start of the play to the finish of it, but the safety to that side shifts so wide that he's only impacting Metcalf's route. That leaves the rest of the defense in man coverage across the board, with four pass rushers and a linebacker playing zone over the middle. When the ball is snapped, we can see Geno's eyes immediately go to the right side. Even though Metcalf is his biggest mismatch receiver, he knows not to force the ball to him when the coverage is tipped in his direction. By zooming in on the quarterback and Goodwin out wide, we can watch them both at the same time and see the timing of the throw relative to the route. Smith starts his throwing motion while Goodwin is still running his stem towards the cornerback. His timing means the ball is released from his hand as Goodwin is entering his break. Therefore, the ball is already on its way as Goodwin moves past the cornerback and his eyes go back to the ball while the cornerback is forced to look at him so he can follow him. This means Goodwin is immediately in control of the catch point. The defender is reacting to him so he can control where the defender goes and what the defender does. From the end zone angle, we can see this timing again, but the impact of it is more obvious. When the ball is arriving to Goodwin, the cornerback is looking up and outside trying to locate it. He's now lost sight of Goodwin and the ball which means it's impossible for him to impact the catch point. Smith's ball placement further exploits this by leading Goodwin to the back of the end zone for what looks like a very easy touchdown, but in reality was an extremely high level play from the quarterback. And of course, that's without even considering that he made this throw from the far hash. Smith made it look very easy. That's the reality of this quarterback. He's always had an elite skill set, but during his early years with the New York Jets, he kept making too many unforced errors. He still made plenty of mistakes last year with the Seahawks, but the rate of his successes far outweighed his failures and made him a very valuable starting quarterback. Pete Carroll will always use a run-oriented offense, even if his 2023 passing game was far more open than those that came before it. These tight formations are something the quarterback has to be comfortable with. Metcalf is isolated again in this formation against the Detroit Lions, but this time he's on the wide side of the field. The safety is directly over the ball, he's not even split to the middle of the field. This means Metcalf is getting more than half the field to work in against the cornerback one-on-one. Geno's timing here is going to be exemplary once again. He begins his throwing motion immediately after hitting the top of his drop, but during his drop, he uses his eyes to hold the safety. This means the safety is still between the hash marks when Smith begins his throwing motion. If he had been led to the outside, the gap between him and where the ball will arrive is close enough that he could have undercut the throw. But since he was held in the middle of the field, there is only open space in front of Metcalf. Smith drops the ball in over the shoulder of the defender for the 26 yard gain. And again, it was another far hash throw that the quarterback made look easy. DK Metcalf isn't Justin Jefferson. He's an insane physical talent, but he's not a technically refined receiver who beats every coverage and runs every route to great effectiveness. As such, it's vitally important that the quarterback he plays with can connect with him where he wins for big plays. We can see Smith hit Metcalf down the left sideline here in a very similar throw against the Kansas City Chiefs. Whenever the defense goes into cover one and dares the quarterback to attack the sidelines, he's got to be able to do it. You need the mindset as well as the arm talents to do so. Geno has both. Against the Los Angeles Rams, the Seahawks draw up a shot play design from a somewhat unusual formation. Whenever you're committed to running the ball, shot plays will feature heavily, but the play fake on this play goes to the wide receiver on an end round while the running back is offset in the backfield. Tyler Lockett is running a post route from the top of the screen while Metcalf runs a deep crossing route from the opposite side. The Rams are playing quarters coverage, which makes them susceptible to the post crosser combination. Gino is going to execute the play fake and then turn around to the top of his drop to read the positioning of the safety on the near side of the field. He can see that safety his depth is held by the crossing route. That safety knows he has the cornerback outside handling Lockett and the opposite safety coming behind him so he sets up to try and undercut Metcalf's crossing route. From the end zone angle, we can see Smith waits until the safety fully commits to stepping forward before winding up the throw in behind him. This time, it's not a throw across the field to the opposite sideline, but he still has to clear 55 yards and maintain a high velocity on the ball to beat the cornerback coming across the field. It's a perfect throw to Lockett for the touchdown. And if you watch closely, you'd have noticed Metcalf knew it was a touchdown long before the ball reached the end zone. That's the confidence he has in his quarterback. That wasn't Smith's best touchdown throw to lock it on the season though. You've probably already seen this play. It's second and six against the New Orleans Saints, but there are only 15 seconds left in the second quarter and the Seahawks have no timeouts. It's end zone or incompletion time here. The Seahawks draw up a shot play with two receivers releasing vertically and two receivers underneath working to the sideline. Defensively, the Saints are playing to protect the end zone. Giving up a first down in this situation is irrelevant. So they have three defenders in deep zones, man coverage across the board underneath and only three pass rushers. Gino reaches the top 
of his drop unencumbered and his eyes are on the safety to the top of the screen. He sees that safety drop but stay wide so the quarterback is immediately aware of the triangle to the inside between him, the inside safety and the safety on the opposite side of the field. This play isn't about manipulating the coverage or getting to a second read, it's about setting himself up to best connect with his first option and that's Lockett. From the end zone angle we can see Gino has a clean pocket so he doesn't need to move but he does move anyway and he does so for a purpose. By stepping forward and slightly to the inside he changes the angle from which he's releasing the ball and through which it will arrive to Lockett in the end zone. This small movement makes the throw easier for him. He can hit Lockett coming across the field instead of having to lead him deeper into the end zone to push the ball past the safety reaching out for the ball. It's another pinpoint throw. It's perfectly thrown into a nearly non-existent window between four defenders. That's a strong contender not just for Gino's best play of the season but for the best play made by anyone all year. We have another example of Smith unfurling his first option and it's another touchdown to Lockett but this time it's against the New York Giants. Again we see the aggression of the Seahawks passing game with four vertical releases and the running back going into the flat. Lockett is lined up at the top of the screen and he's running a double move. The defense is going to leave him one on one, but in theory, the defender is in a good position to see the double move coming and stay on top of it. Smith hits the top of his drop and immediately looks wide to his right, where Lockett is. The coverage and route combinations mean he doesn't have to hold the deep safety before looking outside. Instead, his full focus is on manipulating that outside cornerback. He does this by perfectly timing his pump fake with his receiver's break so that the cornerback thinks he's about to jump a curl out for an interception. He's baiting him. Instead of giving that interception, the space in behind him is exploited and Smith connects with Lockett for the touchdown. This is another outrageous throw from deep and we can see how this time Gino used every last millisecond he had in the pocket to attack the coverage. This kind of ability in the pocket wasn't something that they ever had with Russell Wilson. Wilson during his peak years was a much better athlete than Gino has ever been but Smith is a pure pocket passer in a way that Wilson never was. For this play against the Chargers, Smith starts to play an empty deep in his own territory. All three of the Seahawks wide receivers are to Smith's right side on the wide side of the field. The backside features a running back and a tight end running a high-low concept. Smith's first read is going to be the cornerback to the bottom of the screen. Since the offense has a curl route running across from him and a slot receiver to his side running a fade, he's going to have a receiver above and below him. If the defense is playing zone, the outside cornerback would turn and drop off to pick up the slot receiver. That means Smith would have to clear the slot receiver and beat him to the spot with the throw outside to his curl route underneath. But since the defense is in man coverage, the outside cornerback comes forward and nobody on this side of the field is open now. Smith doesn't panic when his first read is covered. He moves his eyes and then resets his feet to locate the high-low combination on the back side. The timing of this is perfect because the players running it weren't that fast, it was a tight end and a running back rather than two wide receivers. Now he's reading the slot cornerback on the opposite side of the field. He dropped off initially but Gino leads him forward to the running back so that the passing lane behind him opens up. Smith hits his receiver in stride for the first down. The end zone angle shows us how Smith says central and has a clearly defined process as a pocket passer. Wilson had plenty of success in Seattle and that shouldn't be undermined but in this scenario he would have bailed out the back of the pocket or tried to scramble forward which is the inefficient way of playing the position. Against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Seattle sets up with a balanced formation on 2nd and 20. Smith has 4 vertical routes again with skinny posts inside, a sideline route at the top of the screen and a deep out route at the bottom of the screen. When we roll the play on, we can see how the Buccaneers drop into deep coverage to protect the first down line. None of Smith's vertical routes are going to come open against this setup. The defense is trying to force Smith into the check down, leaving it wide open so that they can come up and make the tackle to set up third and long. It's the safe play and normally a play that works. This is the exact moment that Smith starts his throwing motion. His timing here is critical because he's attacking a tiny window it's only going to be open for a split second. We can see how Smith's pass sits the receiver down in between the two defenders. He's purposely stopping his teammate in his route instead of leading him further forward so he is hit by the linebacker waiting for him. This protects his receiver but it also protects the catch point so the ball has a better chance of being completed. It's a 19 yard gain when the defense prioritizes stopping this exact troll. The mark of a good quarterback is that he attacks the defense where they don't want to be attacked and he does it effectively. Gino consistently does that showing off great awareness and technique. He takes what the defense gives him unless he desperately needs what they don't want to give him. One question that is always asked of quarterbacks is if they can throw with anticipation. Anticipation passes are all about timing and envisioning routes before they're run. DK Metcalf is going to drop a touchdown on this play against the Saints. Metcalf is the outside slot receiver on the wide side of the field running a post route. There's a skinny post inside of him and a drag route going inside from outside the numbers. The Saints are showing a four man rush and they have four defenders to the wide side with three on the narrow side. It's man coverage across the board except for the linebacker underneath playing zone and the safety in his own in the end zone. When we roll the play on, Gino 
Mourinho's eyes go to the safety on the wide side of the field. It's important to note at this stage that the cornerbacks playing man coverage can overplay outside leverage to force their receivers inside. That's because of the zone help in the middle of the field. The safety Smith is looking at will do the same to Tyler Lockett when he reaches him on his skinny post route, and that dictates where Gino control the ball. Smith takes a beat at the top of his drop to let the routes develop more before loading up the throw. His timing here is perfect. He begins his motion as the safety is held inside. He knows at this point that there will be a spot to lead Metcalf into at the back of the end zone. From the end zone angle, we can see the Seahawks left guard is being manhandled. The ball has to come out here or Gino is likely to be sacked. Furthermore, he has a linebacker extending himself fully in the passing lane, so Smith has to make a touch throw but make the ball carry enough velocity that it can't be undercut by the cornerback coming underneath Metcalf in the end zone. It's a phenomenal throw that deserves to be caught. Anticipation throws open windows in the coverage, but they also allow quarterbacks to get rid of the ball sooner in the play, which makes it harder to pressure or sack them. The Chargers should get a sack on this play. The Seahawks put Smith under center and have him fake a handoff to the running back while both of his tight ends stay in the pass block. That means Gino is only going to have two receivers to throw to downfield, neither of whom are running fast developing routes. He's not pressured at the top of his drop, and he has a moment to survey the coverage downfield, but he should have more time based on the eight-man pass objection. He needs it for those two receivers to come open. Instead, he has a defensive lineman coming straight through the middle of the pocket. We can see that Smith winds up his throwing motion long before that defender can reach him, but he can only get the ball out this early because he's throwing the ball before his receiver enters the break of his route. Despite having to release the ball early, Smith's placement is perfect for Lockett to turn around and catch the ball uncontested. It's a really good gain on a first down. Quarterbacks who can live in these margins make their teammates better. They also tend to throw more interceptions simply because they can attack more windows in the defense and their more limited counterparts. The trade-off is those more limited quarterbacks check the ball down too often or take more sacks. They can't get the first down when you need them to get the first down. Normally, a quarterback who spends most of his career as a backup isn't capable of excelling technically or standing in strong against pressure. Here we see Gino delivering the ball against a free rusher in his face who not only hits him hard but twists him in the air and drives him into the ground afterwards. Despite the speed of the defender's arrival and the heavy hit, Smith's ball is perfectly placed for Lockett to pull it in before going out over the sideline. Against the Denver Broncos, Smith is going to look for Lockett running a slow developing route in the left slot. Lockett is going to break to the outside and then work back inside. This is the point of the play when Gino wants to throw the ball. It's the easiest throw for him if he hits Lockett as soon as he turns back in field coming out of his break. But the linebacker drifting across is reading the quarterback's eyes and he'll be directly in the passing lane if the ball comes out at this stage. It's a surefire interception for the defense. So instead of releasing the ball, Gino holds it for a beat longer so that the linebacker's momentum pulls him further outside and the window inside of him opens up for Lockett in behind. The end zone angle shows us how Gino holding the ball meant he was hit as the ball was coming out of his hand. This impact doesn't stop him from delivering an accurate ball into the thick of the coverage for a 17 yard gain. This is another play action based shot play design where Gino begins to play under center against the Detroit Lions. Gino turns around to execute the play fake and the left side of his pocket converges onto him at the top of his drop. We can see that the pressure leads to both of Gino's feet coming off the ground and they're level with each other. He turns like this because his feet are being taken away from beneath him. If we go back to the overhead angle, we can see how Gino's left foot is taken away at the exact point that the ball leaves his hand. Despite that pressure, he hits his receiver in stride in the poster up between two defenders for 21 yards. In the same game, we see how Gino handles a cover zero blitz. The Lions are sending their whole front and their slot cornerback after the quarterback. When the Seahawks keep extra blockers in, the deep safety follows behind them. We'll run this play from the end zone angle where we see the defensive end shoot through the C gap so that he's immediately bearing down on the quarterback at the top of his drop. The quarterback isn't flustered though. He sticks to his process and delivers an accurate ball to Lockett downfield. Lockett gains 34 yards and he was wide open when he caught the ball, but it wasn't as straightforward as it looks. We can see from the wider angle that Smith held the ball until Lockett could close the space to the cornerback and threatened to break to the outside. When the corner turns outside, Lockett is unopposed and alone over the middle of the field. Smith's poise and willingness to take that hit made that play possible. If he threw it early, then the cornerback wouldn't have gone outside. Gino is not only willing to stand in strong and take a hit when he sees it coming, he also moves extremely well in response to pressure within the pocket. The San Francisco 49ers nose tackle on this play slips through the left A gap between the left guard and the center so he's immediately on top of Smith during the play fake. He reaches a point where he's completely detached from the blocker and has the quarterback dead to rights. Somehow, Gino reacts instantly after turning around and can jump cut away from the pass rusher. His movement is so sudden and the angle is so sharp that it completely negates the nose tackle's pass rush. And he still has the body control from there to redirect and escape to space. With his eyes downfield, Smith is able to connect with his receiver for a big gain and another first down, despite the play imploding on itself immediately at the snap. 
Here, the Rams are going to pressure Smith with a speed rush around his left tackle on his blind side. The Seahawks left tackle can't keep pace with the edge rusher off the snap, so he's turning the corner right to the spot where Smith establishes himself at the top of his drop. This means he has to immediately step up to avoid being sacked. He does this in one forward jump cut and then slides to his left. Smith would be tempted to scramble into the space to his left, but that's kind of a mirage. By the time he turns to run, the linebacker would have closed it off, so he'd likely be stopped at or behind the line of scrimmage. Instead, Gino keeps his eyes up and locates his open receiver downfield for a first down and another big gain. He wasn't rattled by the pressure early in the play, so his eyes never dropped and he never ran himself into trouble. The Seahawks tried to bootleg their quarterback into the right flat against the Chargers on this occasion. It's not the best play design, because there's no extra protection on the front side, and three of the four front side routes are releasing vertically, so all the defense has to do to stop it is sit on the flat route and send their defensive end to that side off the edge, and that's exactly what they do. Smith is confronted by the edge rusher and he has nowhere to throw the ball. The one safe and grace for him is the defender took a wide starting position. We can see from the end zone angle that he has enough space to pivot and run back towards the opposite sideline. Smith shows great escape ability and then awareness to locate Marquis Goodwin on the opposite sideline for another big play. Goodwin was the target again on this play against the Broncos. The defense is going to get a great rush off Smith's left side. The defensive tackle widens and gets in front of the defensive end so that the left guard and the left tackle get in each other's way. Smith is forced off his spot and moves up through the pocket. He can't escape though because the defensive end has redirected to tackle him from behind. He manages to begin his throwing motion as he's being tackled, but unlike the previous play, he doesn't have a wide open receiver this time. Goodwin is running to the sideline when another receiver runs underneath inside. The inside cornerback is turning to let Goodwin go and jump the inside route, but that was only happening as Smith was being tackled. He had to make this coverage read at the same time that he was beginning his throwing motion to complete the 16 yard throw. It's a really high degree of difficulty play. The New York Jets are going to create multiple points of pressure with their 4 man rush on this play. The left side defensive end builds up speed and bull rushes through the right tackle. The right side defensive tackle penetrates through the middle of the pocket so that Smith can't hold the ball and look downfield. Smith escapes from the pocket but he's met by a defender immediately. He sticks the position of that linebacker by threatening to scramble but remains aware of his running back to the inside. He is comfortable enough to flip the ball forward without stopping so that his running back has time to turn and run into space. The coverage on the downfield routes worked perfectly, but the running back was forgotten by the defense after he stayed on the block. That allowed him to bring the offense deep into the red zone. Throwing on the move comes naturally to Smith. He's the rare quarterback who throws as well moving to his left as he does standing still or moving to his right. On this play against the Saints, you can see how he whips his hips and shoulders around as he's releasing the ball so he can make a precision throw into a tight window for his receiver as he's going out of bounds downfield. The play gains 32 yards from a position where most quarterbacks wouldn't even attempt the throw. Of course, he did one better against the Buccaneers. This time, he escapes into the flat, but there's a defender trailing him. That linebacker closed quickly and hit the quarterback hard immediately after the ball left his hand. His receiver is not really open here, but Smith somehow pushes the ball past the defensive back running underneath the route without overthrowing his intended target. It's another exceptional play. When you get most right-handed quarterbacks moving left, you can shut off the deeper routes and focus on a more constrained area of the field. That's obviously not the case with Geno. And when he's moving right, he can still comfortably throw the ball back infield too, so the receivers don't have to break to the sideline. We see a great example of this against the 49ers. It's a shot play design where the Seahawks only attack one half of the field. The offense keeps two eligible receivers in pass protection to give Geno time, but the fullback is isolated in space against the defensive back and the tight end is isolated against the defensive end. That means Smith is under pressure at the top of his drop. And he has nowhere to go downfield because Metcalf is running into a double team and Lockett's deep curler is being undercut. From the end zone angle, we can see Gino's eyes are downfield in the direction of his receivers. That is causing the coverage to flow in that direction. This leaves space on the opposite side of the field, and since his fullback is outside leverage, Smith has a lane to escape into the right flat. He has the chance to scramble here again with a clear path to the sideline, but Smith keeps his eyes on Lockett, who is mirroring his movement across the field. He's in a lot of space, but there are defenders beneath him and above him, so Gino has to control the trajectory of this throw while his body weight is working against him on the move. Lockett has time at the catch point, and he's equidistant to the defenders around him so he can protect himself before he's hit by the arriving safety. The play gained 27 yards. He would have gained 3 or 4 yards at most if he had scrambled. Gene was more than capable of running the ball. He ran for 366 yards and 68 attempts last season. It will surprise some people, but that was actually significantly more than Russell Wilson. The now Broncos quarterback has run for 460 yards in total since 2020, so the Seahawks didn't really lose anything in that regard by changing quarterbacks. You don't draw up running plays for Geno, but he will pick his spots to scramble like he did on this occasion against the Arizona Cardinals when he gains 24 yards. Of course, ultimately, Geno is a passer, and the last part of his skill set that really stood out in 2022 was his ball placement into tight windows. Metcalf scores his touchdown against the Atlanta Falcons. He releases down the seam against zone coverage and finds a soft spot in the end zone, and then he shows off his athleticism to adjust to the ball in the air. It's a great catch and a great play from the receiver, but the quarterback has to allow this opportunity to arise by putting the ball in the right spot. 
Gino saw Metcalf get in behind the cornerback, but knew he couldn't throw the ball directly to him because of the safety coming across the field. He hits the very top of Metcalf's reach so that the safety can't touch the ball, and he puts the ball outside of his receiver so he's fading away rather than being led into the inevitable contact from the defender. Smith shows off the right balance between making an aggressive decision for the touchdown, but also protecting his receiver and maximizing the catch opportunity by using his accuracy when his receiver isn't open. He also understood which of his receivers he was throwing to. He doesn't throw this ball to Lockett or Goodwin. That's an underrated aspect of being an NFL quarterback. Will Disley is going to score a touchdown by running down the opposite seam against the Detroit Lions here. Disley is the inside tight end to the right. His teammate is going to run a wheel route, so he's isolated against the safety inside of him against man coverage. Gino recognizes that the safety is inside and looking at Disley. He also sees Disley's size advantage, so he uses that by pushing the ball high and outside. Even though the safety is in perfect position, tight to the receiver's body, it's an uncontested catch because of the ball placement at the throw. This is the definition of throwing your receiver to space. It's Marquise Goodwin's turn this time against the Chargers. Gino looks off the safety during his dropback, then turns to Goodwin's sideline route where he's isolated with a cornerback. That cornerback injures his knee as he plans to jump with Goodwin, but even if that hadn't happened, he wouldn't have been able to play the ball until after after Goodwin reached it first. The high arch of the ball on the outside placement meant it perfectly carried over the coverage of the defender. The quarterback drew his wide receiver open. 17 of Smith's touchdowns last season came in the red zone, and despite his aggressive mindset throwing into tight windows, he didn't have any interceptions in the red zone. This red zone play against the Rams is going to focus on the right side of the field. Smith has two front side routes, one going to the flat and one going to the corner. This is a play call set up to attack man coverage. There is a wrinkle to it though, as Smith is going to run right after the play fake with his tight end sealing the edge as a blocker. From this position, Smith can easily scramble, but there is a linebacker waiting for him. His throw outside has a defender lingering over it, hoping he throws the ball that way, and his corner out in the end zone is bracketed by two defenders. There is a third option. It's a backside crossing around to Metcalf, but he's not exactly open. Jalen Ramsey is glued to his back and is going to stay there as the route continues across the field. But it's the best option that Smith has, so he loads up and somehow rifles the ball into the one spot where Metcalf can catch it and Ramsey can't reach it. And that means the defense concedes a touchdown even after playing perfect coverage across the board. Tight window throws against man coverage are generally obvious. They're highlight plays because they look spectacular. Tight window throws against zone coverages often look deceptively open because the receiver can look like he's in more space than he actually is. Here we see the Seahawks set up another shot play design off of play action against the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are playing a variation of cover three. It's warped slightly because they're disguising their pass rush, but the end result behind the defensive line is the same. Gino takes a deep drop and his eyes go to Lockett on his crossing route. There are five defenders around Lockett, and three of them directly impact the window that Smith has to throw into. This is the space that Lockett's route is going to carry him into. This is the starting point for the window that is available to Gino to throw into. The biggest threat to this route is actually the cornerback to the top of the screen. He looks like he's far away, but by the time Gino's pass arrives, both players will have closed the space between each other so they'll be on top of each other. The safety over the top can also come forward and hit Lockett hard if Gino leads his receiver too far upfield. If he overthrows Lockett, then the ball will be intercepted. Similarly, if Smith tries to throw the ball too hard to try and reach Lockett earlier by lowering its trajectory, the linebacker underneath the play will be in position to intercept the ball as well. So suddenly, all the space that we can see between these defenders is not actually the window that Gino can throw the ball into. The actual window he can throw into is much smaller than that. Smith is able to adjust the ball placement of his pass without overthrowing or underthrowing it so that Lockett is stopped in his route and can protect himself from the heavy hit coming from the defender outside. On shot play designs, the quarterback rarely has the chance to manipulate a defender in coverage. Here the Seahawks spread the offense out so all five receivers release into the routes downfield, so this is not a shot play, it's the opposite. The Lions are playing zone and Gino's focus during his dropback is on the safety on the near side of the field. He doesn't need to hold him for a long time, just until he reaches the top of his drop. Once he reaches the top of his drop, he takes a beat before delivering the ball to his post route between the two safeties. We can see the defender Smith initially held lays a hard hit on the receiver, but not before he secured possession for the 23 yard gain. At this point, you must be asking yourself if Geno Smith is this good, why isn't he talked about alongside the likes of Patrick Mahomes? The truth is he has that level of talent, but he still has to continue to take the unforced errors out of his game. They're nowhere near as prominent as they once were, but they're also not as infrequent as they are with the very best quarterbacks in the league. The Seahawks want to push the ball downfield and attack tight windows in their passing game, so Pete Carroll will happily take the inevitable turnovers that come with that style of offense because the trade-off in big plays works in their favor. And considering how bland and conservative NFL offenses have largely become, that's actually a really refreshing mindset for an NFL coach to have. Geno should be a fan favorite in the way he plays. With Kenneth Walker emerging and Rashad Penley hopefully returning, the Seahawks only really need another complementary receiver to round out their skill positions on offense. The supporting cast in Seattle is really exciting, and the overall age profile suggests it will get better again next season. Smith should not only prove worthy of his new contract, he should outperform it and give the Seahawks great value in a quarterback market where value hasn't existed in a while.